Hello and welcome to the OTB channel. Did you used to be a fan of Ubuntu Unity? Many did. It was a firm favourite and there was a great deal of disappointment when it was dumped for the GNOME shell back in 2017. Worry not though, there is light at the end of the tunnel and sometimes it is a good thing to go back to the past. This month a new distro has been released the Ubuntu Unity Remix, and it returns to the past with flair. Let's have a look at it after the intro. Okay, welcome back. So the one thing that you can say before we start today is that Ubuntu, or Canonical, has never been afraid of controversy. They started off in 2004 with the classic GNOME desktop, GNOME 2. Uh, I rode that wave, absolutely loved the distribution. It built up a massive following, and let's face it, forget what it says on DistroWatch, it is undoubtedly the biggest Linux distribution that we have today uh, in all of its various flavors. But having done all of that, we suddenly got to about 10 years ago when uh, the GNOME 3 shell was introduced and uh, Ubuntu, it was all expected it would move to GNOME 3, struck out on its own and... Uh, developed the Unity desktop. And I remember at the time there was lots of consternation about that. Was it doing the right thing? Why didn't it stay with GNOME? But anyway, all of that aside, Unity got better and better. It was a little bit buggy to start off with, uh, as anything new is. Um, but it built up a fan base, including myself. I used it. And... Uh, Many people grew to love Unity. It became, well, because Ubuntu was the most popular distro, it became the most popular desktop environment. So there was uh, quite a lot of disappointment when it was unceremoniously dumped uh, back in 2017, and Ubuntu returned to standard GNOME, which was now, of course, the GNOME shell. Um. I was disappointed as well. Um, I tried to like the GNOME shell um, when it was first released, and uh, I couldn't. I just couldn't take to it. And I have to say, I still can't take to it. I dislike the desktop environment. But that is just a personal opinion. To my mind, the best thing about GNOME 3 being re released and replacing the old classic GNOME 2 was the fact that it gave rise to, I suppose uh, you could call it uh, almost opposition desktop environments. Um, so we saw Unity being developed. The Linux Mint team went off and did their own thing with Cinnamon, and we saw Ma Mate being developed. And, uh, yeah, so, so the introduction of GNOME 3, while I've never taken to it, was ultimately responsible for the desktop environments that I actually quite like these days. Well, it may have been dumped, but it never went away, Unity. And uh, it's recently been brought back um, by a young developer in the form of the Ubuntu Unity Remix. And... What the developer, well, let, let me just say, I think this needs saying right from the word go. The developer is a guy called, I'm just reading it here, and I'm sorry if I butcher your name, Rudra Saraswat. The developer is 10 years old. 10 years old. I really do feel like an old tech bloke. Um, <laughs> 10 years old, wow. I mean, I've been using Linux for 16 years, so I'd been using it for six years before Rudra was even born. I think he's going to be destined for great things. And I believe he, he's already been... Uh, I'm looking at the Forbes article on him now. 
He's already worked with the likes of Alan Pope, and he set his sights on his Ubuntu Unity remix uh, becoming an official flavour. I mean, we already have a few flavours of Ubuntu. I'm just looking through a list now. We have, obviously, the standard GNOME flavour. Uh, do you even call it a flavour? We have the GNOME desktop in standard Ubuntu. We then have Kubuntu, Lubuntu, Ubuntu Budgie, Ubuntu Kylin, Ubuntu Mate, Ubuntu Studio, and Zubuntu. And then we have some remixes that I've looked at that... Uh, are coming up in the rear, or with the main aim of becoming an official flavour. So I looked at Ubuntu DDE a couple of weeks ago. It was fine. I looked at the Ubuntu Cinnamon remix, which I was really quite impressed at. And I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with this Ubuntu Unity remix. As I said in the introduction, it may be a case of returning to the past in some ways, but uh, sometimes it's a good thing to return to the past, especially when the past was uh, quite popular. Um, I'm not quite sure of all the reasons, whether it was financial, whether it was to do with the different priorities Canonical needed, Canonical needed to focus on as to why they took the decision to, uh, to dump Unity. And I think it was probably something to do with Initially, they'd had the idea that there was going to be this concept of convergence where people would run Ubuntu on tablets, on their TVs, on their phones, and the Unity interface was sort of designed to adapt to all of those different mediums. Once that um, priority was abandoned... I suppose it made sense in a way to stop spending so much development time on a desktop environment w that was only ever going to be a desktop environment and to move to something a little bit simpler to maintain. Okay, I know that UB ports have uh, kind of picked up Unity and uh, they've worked with it for uh, their own sort of version on, on the Ubuntu phone, but hey... Anyway, let's have a quick look at the website of uh, this young developer. So you should see uh, the website now in front of you. Uh, it's at ubuntuunity.org. And it's quite a nice, clean-looking uh, desktop. Or website, should I say. Uh, Unity 7, modernized with Yaru and Papyrus theming. You can upgrade from Xenial without any worries, apparently. Unity 7 has been modernized. It's got the Yaru GTK theme and Papyrus icon themes, um, as well as the old ambience themes, should you wish to use that. Um, the tweak tool is actually included by default, and it includes all the standard goodies such as the HUD, the global menu, etc., etc. Oh, and download hundreds of apps from the Snap Store. Well, yeah, it's going that way. Um, okay, so not a lot else to see here. How do you download it at the moment? Well, there's three basic links. The website's not exactly fast, but uh, could be my connection. Uh, there's a link from Mediafire. There's a torrent available, and there's a download from Mega. Uh, I have to say that... Uh, I used the torrent, and it came down fairly quickly. I'm not so sure about using Mediafire or Mega. In fact, I'd recommend that you actually do this because the ISO itself is well over 3 gigs because it comes pretty well loaded with lots of different apps. So, okay, um, UbuntuUnity.org, that's the website. Go and download it by all means. Give it a spin. See what you think. And that's what I want to do now. Let's move on to the installation. So let's start the process off. Um, I've attached the Ubuntu Unity Remix to uh, VirtualBox. I've given it 8 gig of uh, RAM, two threads of my i5 processor. And let's just hit start and see what happens. And I'll make that full screen and we'll go through the boot process. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long. 
we obviously haven't got full resolution at the moment, uh, but I've actually tested this already, and the Ubuntu-based uh, ISOs are pretty good at the moment uh, in terms of VirtualBox in that they are all going to full-screen resolution pretty much as soon as you get past the login screen. I see it's doing a disk check before we even start, which is useful. Check finish, no errors found. Okay, great. Uh, I presume it would attempt to fix any errors if it did find them. I'm not going to boot into the desktop here. We're going to get a number of options. Well, two separate options on this installer. One will give us the opportunity to test the desktop before we install. The other will just take us straight to the install. And it's all gone a little bit black at the moment, so I'm not quite sure what's happening. Sometimes this is a, a bit of a virtual box quirk, so I'll just take it out of uh, full screen and then put it back in. And sometimes that resolves the problem. And <laughs> it did it in this case. I'm not sure why that happens, but hey. So there's the two options, try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. Well, we're going to go through uh, the desktop once we've installed it, so let's just hit install and see what it takes us to. This is the standard Ubiquity installer, I believe, so I'll set it for UK English and continue. What do I want to start with? I will do a normal installation, and I always uh, take install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, just in case, if, you, if you're particularly new to Linux, you don't want to spend time initially searching for these things. So it's useful if you have them pre-installed. And we go to Next. And at this point, it should uh, take us to what we want to do. Do we want to erase the disk and install Ubuntu? Or do we want to do something else? buy something else do we want to set up our own partitions or point the installation to certain places on a, an existing disk well no we don't we just want to use the whole disk but you do have some advanced options here if you want to use lvm you can do it there or you could even erase the entire disk and use zfs we're not going to do any of that we're just going to proceed as normal so install now there's the confirmation so it's setting up uh, a root partition. Right, so it's picked up our time zone as London, so that's correct. And it's asking for my name, so OTB. And we'll enter the normal password twice. Do we want to log in automatically? No, I don't think so. And it will now get on and do the install. So I'll speed this up and we'll come back when it requires some interaction from me. Right, so installation is now completed. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll shut this virtual machine down. I'll fire up the installed version. I'll fully update it. And we'll come back and we'll have a look at the desktop. Right, so welcome back. And you should see the Ubuntu Unity desktop in it, all its glorious purplishness in front of you um i did boot it up after the installation and i installed all updates it didn't need the guest edition so that's great it's just booted straight away to uh, full hd i thought the installation took a little bit longer than normal it took about 12 minutes but having said this this isn't one of these one and a half two gig isos i mean this is well over three gigs so there's a lot of additional software to install. But there you see it. Unity is back. And, uh, yeah, it's looking good. Just out of interest, let's see what it's actually doing as far as uh, 
memory is concerned. I've literally just booted this, so I've not been opening and closing things, and it's showing 923 megs. Okay, um, Unity was never a lightweight desktop, and uh, <laughs> clearly this isn't. I mean, this is just rebooted, so there hasn't been anything else that's going to be draining the memory. Obviously, it's on VirtualBox, so that uses a little bit more, but it's not going to be for a machine with low resources. So we have here the standard dash, uh, where we can search for all of our uh, software, and let's just have a quick look and see what we've got. If I just make that full screen and have a look at what comes installed by default. And there's a lot <laughs> and that sort of explains why uh it's such a big iso so you have all your standard things appearance your archive manager your calculator let's just open that is that g calc let's have a look about calculator just calculator i presume it's g calc but uh we will see um let's go to applications again and have a look. I, I've installed HTOP on here. That's the only thing that I've done with it. We have two file managers. Now, I believe one is going to be Nautilus. So let's just open that up now. Or is this Nautilus? Yes, it looks to me like Nautilus. And the default, I believe is going to be the Cinnamon Desktop uh, file manager, which is Nemo. And that appears to be Nemo. I quite like Nemo, actually. Uh, it, it's quite a nice file manager. Right, let's uh, go to the other applications and see what else we've got. Uh, Firefox web browser installed by default. The GDB package installer. Not that you need that a lot these days with Ubuntu because it's mainly snaps. Uh, keyboard, the LibreOffice suite. Some big buttons for logout, reboot, and shutdown. Okay, so the shortcuts. Why you necessarily need them when you can shut down from the standard uh, panel above there, I'm not sure, but hey ho. Logs, Mahjong, a game, Mine's a game. Various settings, Ramina remote client, power statistics, rhythm box for music, screen display. Oh, right, that's just, is this just like a show desktop? Oh, no, it's your screen settings. And as you can see, we're on 1920 by 1080 here. Um, and let's go back to applications, a screenshot tool, Shotwell photo manager. The Snap Store and the Software Store. We'll have a look at those in a minute. Your Software Updater, Startup Disk Creator, Synaptic Package Manager, your System Monitor. Let's see what that says and see if it matches what HTOP was uh, putting out. Uh, well, it's actually telling us we're using 1.3 gig now as we've been opening and closing a few things. Okay, um, what else have we got? It comes with the Unity Tweak tool installed by default, Thunderbird Mail, UX term and X term. Okay. And user account. Users and groups and user accounts. Let's just open these. So that's user accounts. Okay, let's open the other one and see what the difference is there. Okay, so we've we've got two things that essentially do the same thing from what I'm seeing here. And I presume that one is from Unity and uh, the other is from the Ubuntu base. Fine, it makes it a little bit confusing, I think, but nevertheless so um i like the look of it to start off with 
It does, though, seem to look a little bit more gnome-like than I remember. Um, maybe it's just me. I haven't really used... I've, I've not been a user of Gnome 3 for many, many years. Um, as soon as it, was, uh, it came out and it replaced Gnome 2, I used it for two or three weeks and then got rid. Uh, and I have used Unity on the desktop quite a lot, and I grew to love it. As, as did so many people. Just standing back and looking at it now, though, it, it, it looks quite similar to GNOME. I don't quite know what I remember, but hey. One thing to say about this, and I, I have checked this, this distro does not come with any PPAs. It is based on the standard Ubuntu um, base. In fact, if I uh, go to the Synaptic Package Manager... I can show you that now. Just let that sort itself out. And I go to the repositories, which should open in a second, we hope. So we've got the standard uh, Ubuntu repositories there. No PPAs. I'm really quite pleased to see that. So it's kept it nice and clean. So, okay, on the face of it, it looks great. It looks like we've got Unity 7 back. It's really nicely themed, and that was a, a big thing in, in the announcement that it's been brought up to date, and it's certainly looking very much like, well, it, it's got that sort of style that the other Ubuntu uh, remixes that we've seen have got. Let's have a look at... Uh, the desktop backgrounds that we can uh, set. We have our very purple um, desktop background here, but I believe there's quite a few, quite a few choices here. And in fact, there does appear to be. We've got quite a nice wallpaper selection. So, okay, that's very colourful. And we've got the launcher obviously changing colour as we do that. Um, let's try something else. One thing that I would say, I know this is in VirtualBox, it, it, it does feel a bit sluggish to me compared to some of the other desktops that I've used. But uh, I know Unity was never great in VirtualBox, so it would be unfair to make any sort of... Uh, or come to any sort of conclusion simply based on that. Wow, that's colourful. Um, yeah. I think I, I, I prefer a more traditional look rather than all of that purple in your face, but that that's just myself. And then we have behaviour, so auto-hide the launcher. And there it is, it's gone. And it comes back. Uh, show menus for a window in the menu bar, in the Windows title bar, etc., etc. And we obviously have the global menu up here, which will tell us exactly what's going on. So what about theming in general? I think we need to go to the tweak tool again and have a quick look there. And uh, you can see we've got a number of things that we can do here, but there are the general themes and the icon sets. And I see as a standard, it appears to be using Papyrus icons. Let's just open up the file manager. And uh, yeah, so Nemo. Yeah, I recognize those icons. Has it got that latest icon? Was it Yaru? Yeah, it was. I really quite like them, <laughs> the Yaro icons. I think they look really good. Um, but let's set it back to Papyrus from now. So you've got quite a few icon themes installed. Cursor, well, you can do different things there. You can play with the fonts. As far as the themes are concerned, so it looks like it's on ambience at the moment. Uh, if I hit restore defaults, just to make sure I haven't changed that. Oh, Unity Tweak Tool has closed unexpectedly. Okay, well, you get these uh, little error messages on these things, but it looks like it's opened up again now. Yes, it has. 
and uh, we're back to where we were. Okay, it's quite nice looking. Uh, it comes preloaded with a load of applications, which I'm quite pleased to see in a way, and uh, I think quite a sensible selection of tools. So that's good. What about the bar? What have we got? Well, we've got Firefox on the bar, uh, LibreOffice, the software store. Now, as you're probably aware, Ubuntu is tending to use snaps now. So I'm assuming most of these will be a snap. PowerShell? Okay, well, let's have a look. Yeah, it's from Snapcraft. Uh, what else? Let's just pick something else. Um, the Zoom client, for those who still want to use it. Uh, let's see where that's from. Yeah, these are all snaps. So you have your standard Ubuntu store that you can install um, applications from. You can also use Synaptic. Synaptic will allow you to install dev files. And you also, I believe, have the Snapcraft store uh, installed. And, and this confused me initially because I wasn't sure if you've got a software store that's stuffed full of apps anyway, why do you need the Snapcraft store as well? Hmm. Does it have additional snaps in there that aren't in the software store? I don't know. But essentially, you've got choices here about what you actually go ahead and install. So what have we got installed there? The Canonical Live Patch. It did prompt me to install that when I first booted into the install system. Uh, the GNOME 3.2 runtimes and uh, the 3.34 stack. Okay, fine. Well, let's just shut that down. So you've got two things in there. I've also noticed that the tweak tool is installed by default, which is good to see. However, there seems to be a little bit of conflict with this and the standard settings. So let me just open both and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if I was, for instance, to go to um, the keyboard, on the standard settings and to look at the shortcuts there. And then to perhaps go to, where would we go to? Let's have a look at general. Not sure where it's going to be actually in the tweak tool. Um, additional, yeah, okay. So here to invoke the hood, which is brilliant. So you can search for uh, all sorts of settings in there. And you can see the ones that I've been searching through before. I used to use that a lot when I uh, actually use Unity. So there it tells us that Alt is the uh, shortcut key. But key to show the HUD here in the main settings is Alt L or Alt capital L. So let me try Alt capital L. That doesn't work seems a little bit strange that we've got two two uh shortcuts there and only one of them works i presume this is the settings from your standard gnome the other thing is if we go into the unity tweak tool and we go to say the launcher we have two different uh items here where we can hide the launcher or show the launcher so in the standard settings Okay, that works. What about if I auto hide it, hide it on the tweak tool? Nope, doesn't make any difference. Okay, so in the tweak tool, we can adjust the blur. We can have a look at how long uh, the menu's visible for when we pull down the dash, which the shortcut to is um, the Windows key. The workspace switcher which uh, is Alt-Tab. There we go. So this, there seems to be a little bit of duplication. But you've got to be fair here. This is built on a pure GNOME base. It's not using a PPA. So the developer is trying to keep it as clean as possible without changing the underlying system. And it's early days. This hasn't actually been up for very long. So, yeah, we're back to Unity. Welcome back. 
and uh, it's got a fair amount of uh, software to get us started, which is pretty nice, to be honest. We've got Nemo as the default file manager, which is good to see. Who was like Nemo? We've got Firefox, and it should start in a minute. And there we are. Have we got a home screen? Yeah, we have. Okay, interestingly enough, I have noticed that the global menu doesn't seem to come up with this, um, which is strange, really. You'd have expected that to have worked generally. Let me just... Uh, yeah, so the, the global menu is working fine with Nemo, but it doesn't seem to be working with Firefox. Okay, so just something about integration, really. Is there anything else that we need to know? That it's If you've used Unity before, it is very friendly to use. And when fit people first had to deal with it, there, were, there was... It was at a time when getting rid of GNOME 2 and going towards GNOME 3 was causing all sorts of issues and lots of unhappy people were out there. And when Ubuntu suddenly made the choice to, to move over to Unity, again, lots of unhappy people there. Why have you left GNOME, etc., etc., including the Linux Mint team who went off and did their own thing. But over time, people really started to enjoy using the Unity desktop. Um, and me personally, I mean, this is just a quick look, but I think it is pretty much as I remember it. I did like the uh, HUD, where you could just uh, type a command and go and find out what, whatever settings you've been looking for or whatever you've been searching for. Um, I like the easy way that we can work with... Uh, the search item here. Um, I'm not so sure about the size of things, but uh, I suppose that's just a bit gnome-like. But that's just me. It's. Uh, I think I'd probably keep it that size. Yeah, I think I'd probably keep it that size if I was installing this. There's not a huge amount more to say about this. We've got a good selection of wallpaper. It comes with quite a decent selection of software. And uh, it's yet another remix being added to the Ubuntu stable. And I'm sure it's a remix that over time will become a, an official flavor. So let's go and have a quick chat. So that was the Ubuntu Unity remix. And... Uh, Overall, I have to say for a new distro that's just come out and something that's been put together by such a young developer, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. It certainly is a return to the past, but it looks good. It feels modern. Yes, it's quite sluggish on VirtualBox, but I seem to remember Unity always was. Yes, it's not lightweight, but Unity never was. But what we have is a desktop environment that many people loved, but on top of a 2004 base. It's early days, of course, and the, it, there may be a few bugs and tweaks uh, are required, and I'm sure they'll happen. Um, I like the desktop. My only consternation was there's a little bit of a duplication of things there, like, you know, the tweak tool and the settings manager seem to not be working completely in a compatible fashion and having two file managers i suppose that might just be because it's ba built on the ubuntu base that's what you get on top automatically um but i liked it i think it's worth a try if you've never tried unity before give it a spin if you tried it and you used to enjoy it well this may be the distro for you so with that said, uh, that's it for the video today. Come and join me on Library, Reddit, or my Facebook group, and you have a great day. Enjoy your weekend, guys.